mom says uh, you're going with your dad on Saturday to the airport and you go kicking and screaming or you go happily. It, it's kind of your choice, but you are going to the airport. <laughs> and, and I'm guessing you two went happily because you're still in it. Still in it. Still in it, yeah. And um, Well, Dad had, had his Mustang and he bought his first Mustang in 1964. Yep. Sold it in 67 or 68. Yeah, something like that. Something something like that. that. 1970, uh, flew the first Sea Fury. He got the project in 69. 68. Is it 68? 68. I'm, it's a year off. Who, who would notice? 68, by, by 1970, the Sea Fury was flying. So we grew up with the airplanes. And uh, then he bought a T-34 project. And he got the T-34 going. And uh, you know, at that point, Dennis, you know, like you said, we were being drug out to the airport. And after a while, you don't get drugged quite so hard. And in fact, uh, uh, after high school, we both started college. but. The pull of the airport was was too much. It was hard to study when you had airplanes and and projects uh, that just needed to be flown and, and needed work. You know, our dad first took us to Reno in 1968. Yeah, 1968. yeah we were just you know, kids, nine and ten years old, and, and I think we were in the back of the nine. 912 Porsche. Yeah, the blue 912 was still parked in the parking lot today. Yeah, still there. So dad took us to the air races. We watched Daryl Greenemeyer and, and all, had to sneak us into the pits because you know, in that day and age, kids weren't allowed in the pits. Kids weren't allowed in the pits. Yeah, and I've, one of my favorite stories is Dennis and I and a friend of ours actually got kicked into the pits at Reno. And we had, uh, we had gone up there uh, and dad, mom and dad dropped us off at the gate, down by the Lear gate. And uh, we were armed with red rags. Dad always said, if somebody looks like they're gonna challenge you, just take the red rag, walk over to any airplane and start wiping oil off. And they'll just figure you're part of the team and they'll part leave of the you team. alone. Leave you alone, yeah. And uh, we had thing, a Frisbee. The other thing we had was a Frisbee. We had a Frisbee. So we start off down the dirt road out into the desert. Playing out, Frisbee. Behind Lear jet, Lear playing frisbee, and then we get far enough away, we think we're good, we cut through the fence and start sneaking out through the desert. Well, somebody comes by in a helicopter doing rides or something, so. We were spotted. We were spotted. So we stand up, what else are you gonna do? We stand up and start playing frisbee. A cop comes over by the hangar and yells out, hey, you kids, get back in the pits, you can't be out there playing frisbee. We got thrown into the pits. Into the pits. <laughs> we were in. We were in. With a police escort. <laughs> Actually, the strategy was, was to set a pace that ne we knew we could fly all day, uh, you know, for the whole race, for the whole week. And we set the pace and ran it for the whole week and didn't break the airplane. And well, that, like, as Dad would say, to finish first, first you have to finish. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's, that's always been the, the adage on Dreadnought. But, you know, we built the airplane up. Uh, we started right after Reno in 82. Mm -hmm. uh, Dad pitched the idea to, to Dennis and I and to Mom. He had to get blessings from Mom first. And that was the hard one. That was the hard one. And we started on it in uh, October. October. And not only did we restore a Sea Fury, because we had the airframe, but it, it wasn't restored. We restored the Sea Fury, built the engine mount, had to design it, build it, built all the exhaust, the oil system. I mean, it was a, uh, built all the cowling, uh, spinner, you know. It was an all-out effort. It was an all-out effort. Yeah, all-out effort. All-out effort. I, in fact, I can tell you, it was uh, seven to seven, seven days a week. We quit on five o'clock on Sunday just because it was Sunday. We took Christmas Day off. We worked New Year's Day that year. Yeah. And that's what we did for one full year. All that's out, all the stops, nothing else. There's a lot of guys that want to race at Reno. Then you say, okay, who can race? Who's got the talent? Who's got the edge? It starts getting smaller and smaller list. It really does. And Neil Anderson uh, fit the group, and he did a great job for us. He and, did. Yeah. yeah but there's and, always family dynamics. You know, when fathers and sons are working together, you know, there's some dynamics there. And I, Dad didn't want the stress of, 
trying to, you know, he could either be the pilot or the team manager or, or the head engineer, but to do all of that and race, and we've seen it through the years, you know, one of the things that it's, it's hard to do. tells the new guys that want to come racing, come to race, come as the pilot. You need to be focused. You need to attend all the pilot briefings. You don't have the time to worry about getting the soda and making sure that the airplane oh, yeah. you know, uh, is, is serviced and, and all the issues are taken care of. So you know, dad wisely, I think, chose to not be the builder, mechanic, you know, engineer, and pilot. Yeah. He needed somebody that was just the pilot. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, when you, when you look at it, you just have a passion for aviation. You know, one of the first airplanes that, that we actually owned together was a Luscom. And we still have a Luscom. Yeah, we still have a Luscom and, today. And the Luscom, I mean, it's grassroots aviation. And, you know, you can pull out the Luscom and go fly it for an hour, and it only burns four gallons of gas. And, you, you know, you take off and look down, and there's a tire in the green fields. I mean, it, it's just getting into the air is, is a joy. And then another airplane that, that Dennis put together, uh, we still wonder... I, I wondered his sanity. He, he built up an N3N. And I think the N3N holds this fascination for you because you were flagging for our uncle in Arizona yeah. watching N3Ns go by, dodging the parathion. And <laughs> well, yeah. I, I was uh, 15 years old and I was a loader flagger. And uh, my uncle was flying ag cats, but the competition was flying N3Ns. And we would go over as Bob Copeland with Santan dusters and sprayers there in Chandler, Arizona. We'd go over and see him, and there were the N3Ns. And, uh, he, and, and he had a top wing. It was still in navy fabric, hanging in the top of his hangar. And I remember looking at it when I was 15 years old. Well, I went back 20 years later. Bob is still a family friend, and he still had the parts. And I bought an N3N out of the junkyard, but I got that top wing that was still hanging there. Well, more years go by, but we finally did restore the airplane. Uh, we've had it flying for three years now. It's, a, it's fun, it's easy, and... Um, we enjoy it way more than we thought we would. Oh yeah, it flies way more than anybody thought it would fly. Yeah, and it's kind of funny, because when you look at, you do airplane rides, you know, a lot of people, you know, people come out, you wanna go for an airplane ride. Well, Dennis compares the N3N to a pony ride. It's like giving pony rides. Everybody's happy to go, and it's not scary, and it's not hard, but it's fun. It's open cockpit. It's like the old barnstorming days. So yeah. are we passionate about one airplane in particular? I think we're passionate about all of them because they all hold a, a, a certain... To me, flight's just fascinating uh, from, the, from the very core uh, as far as... Is there anything that compares to the fighters? No. Well, <laughs> we do more Sea Furies than anything. And we are, uh, we have dedicated a tremendous amount of effort into keeping the Sea Fury going in our parts that we are building, the parts that we've collected. We buy more parts than we know what to do with just so we know where they're going and keeping them going in the right direction. So yeah, the Sea Furies are high water mark of what we I don't uh, collect Luscom parts anymore. I don't collect <laughs> N3N parts. I don't collect Twin Beach parts. But we but, collect C3 parts. But when you talk about a favorite airplane, Dad used to talk about having an adrenaline rush and becoming an adrenaline junkie. And every time I go and fly the C Fury, it's an adrenaline rush. I mean, you pull out on the runway and you put 2,000 to 2,500 horsepower, you know, uh, and the thing comes into the air at you know, 100 knots, you got, if you fly it near its limit, you're gonna run over 400 miles an hour at some point in your flight. And then of course, Dennis and I are both doing an aerobatic routine in the airplane, and it is a rush. Yeah, but, but the new, air, the new, as mom would say, Corsair fever has hit the shop. <laughs> Brian and I just got a Corsair project, and uh, that is our, our new passion. It'll never replace Sea Furies, but that's what we're, we're for everybody listening. We're chasing. We're looking for Corsair parts. 